It's so funny how uh, every single thing that comes along, everybody tries to make a a total body uh, exercise device out of it, whether it's a stability ball or whether it's this TRX thing, which which has been around for a little bit now. But it's so funny how um, its real its its real um, most awesome objective capabilities are kind of obscured by the fact that people are trying to do goofy things like lunges with their foot on one side of it and that kind of stuff and, and just kind of ruining all strength opportunities by making more balancey stuff. But the big thing is we, um, we started exploring this suspension training thing back in about, oh, it was about 98, 99. And, um, and we were doing it with chains because chains, of course, then you could do incremental uh, adjustments in length because we would do pulling exercises of the very different length that we would do pressing exercises etc and it's interesting here's here's some video you can kind of take a look and just playing with this stuff and it's uh, it's pretty poor quality video I apologize but here's a guy just kind of doing a, a chest press kind of a thing and you can see him going to the bottom and it may be difficult for you to see but there's a chain suspended here and a separate chain suspended over here and the width above is chosen based on the forces we want to create in the shoulder and elbow and we can change the angle. Like I think there's a there's a scene here where after a couple reps he comes up and kind of lifts his butt up in the air to a, an improper version of a push up. But the point is not is he doing the right kind of a push up. The point is what's the angle of pull of the force that he's creating around the shoulder. And what this is is the equivalent of a slight incline press. So when you start looking like this at, at things like that, you got to look at lines of force relative to the body. You can't look at what you memorize this thing to be. Oh, that's a butt up in the air push up. No, it's an inclined suspension press, if we were to use the terms associated with normal benches. But I wanted to go in and show you some things. I think I think the tremendous limitations in this TRX thing center around the idea uh, center around the idea that that they're suspended from single single strands of webbing and then break off into individual handles from a from a V shape that's over the body and the problems that actually creates or I should say not so much problems but the limitations that creates because you're creating a press in here this is you that spider looking thing is you and here's your head and here's your blue arms and here's your blue torso and you're at the bottom of a press and this thing is wrapped around you by diverging uh, from this one point you're really limited in what you can do with it and if you understand moment arms you understand how incredibly limiting this is especially for varying sizes of people and that kind of stuff if you were to understand this stuff well enough you could manipulate things like for example you could make the two individual straps or chains that are suspended from this this bar you could make them at roughly shoulder width or something like that so that at the top here's the top of your press they are roughly shoulder width or maybe slightly outside of your shoulder width and then as you lowered yourself from this width this is top bottom oops i was going to use blue for you since you like blue shirts or something i don't know we're down here and now at the bottom of the press you've created a very different scenario where the the uh, force might be angled slightly inside of your elbow so it's more of a conventional moment arm relationship between like you might create in a dumbbell press or something like that um, but the angle changes and that's a cool thing to manipulate another thing we used to do that's really really fun is actually take it a, 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 a bit wider a bit wider so that at the top the force is convergent upon your arm got to give you bigger arms here right so here you are at the top of the press and the uh, the uh, cables pulling out a little bit as well as pulling up on you and and so that creates a, a much more dramatic moment arm of resistance right here at the shoulder and even one at the elbow that's that's crossed over the elbow so it'd be less elbow extensors and there actually be in the order of doing this press some eccentric elbow flexors as you are pressing but but if i showed you the bottom position for that big arms again now at the bottom because of the width you might actually have it so that at the bottom they're a little more vertical and parallel with each other. So, so now it's more balanced through your elbow. These, 
tops and bottoms with the different widths of starting position for the suspension device create totally different exercises with totally different influences. And if someone has shoulder problems, you might use one or the other. Just letting you see that when you're sold this packaged goods up here, you're not getting the full biomechanical picture. I'm not sure they've explored it. Maybe they have, and this was just the most um, uh, price-wise, the thing they decided to give you. But honest to goodness, you could go to Home Depot and create something like this for about eh, 15 16 dollars and have and manipulate it across the top of a cable crossover bar or something like that any way you wanted for a given individual